Hello, and thank you for joining us for another Westwood Trust Creative Chat. My name is Claire Williamson, and I am Director of Education and Community Engagement at Society for the Performing Arts. To describe myself and my surroundings, I'm a white woman with dark brown hair pulled back and dark framed glasses. I'm wearing a green checkered uh, collared shirt, and there are several photos on the white wall behind me. I'm thrilled to be chatting today with Sunny Mehta, Artistic Director of the Live Commission Awardee of the Houston Artist Commissioning Project Ensemble Riaz Kavali. The mission of SPA's Houston Artist Commissioning Project is to provide economic and creative support to Houston's artist community with six local artists awarded funds to create original work that will premiere on the Jones Hall stage this October and November for two socially distanced performances. To learn more about the Houston Artist Commissioning Project and to purchase tickets, please visit our website. The link is in the video description. Before we delve into the conversation, I would like to take a moment to humbly acknowledge the many indigenous communities that have long used and continue to use this land as a living and gathering space. SPA's offices on Jones Hall are located on ancestral land traversed by the Karankawa, Atakapa Ishak, Sana, and Kualuitekan people. The Alabama Cushada also migrated to the Houston area over three centuries ago and have played a huge role in shaping the culture and economy of our region. We know that a land acknowledgement is not enough, but we look to this as a starting place of recognition and respect for the lived experience of the people of this land and the forces that have led to this moment. It's now my pleasure to share a little bit more about Riaz Kavali's commission work, St. Kabir's Poems in Kavali. Kabir Das was a prolific poet of the Batki tradition from South Asia. He was loved by the Hindu, Muslim, and Sikh communities. This is true even today, evidenced by the fact that his poetry is sung in Hindu bhajans, Sikh sabads, excuse my pronunciation, and Sufi songs. St. Kabir's poetry will be performed in a newly composed Kabali by Riaz Kabali. The selected lyrics will tease out interfaith themes and the need for introspection for worshipers. The last several years have divided the South Asian immigrants settled in the greater Houston area. The tumultuous political rifts have transpired in South Asia and have impacted the communities here. Taking inspiration from the region's pluralistic heritage and the poetry of St. Kabir, Riaz Kavali looks to celebrate what each of these different communities has in common. The musicians hope with the commissioning is to activate art to facilitate healing. Perhaps the music and the subsequent community dialogue can act as a balm for the wounds of the past, allowing us to build afresh for a better tomorrow. Welcome, Sunny. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. Hello. How about that? that Perfect. Better? Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Claire. I'm excited to, to talk about this stuff. Yes. Um, we are so excited for, for your premiere. Um, I, just to start off, could you share a little bit more with us about the history and structure of the ensemble? I know you all tour around the country, but we're really sure. excited to be featuring you at home. Yeah, well, I, you know, I have to first thank Society of Performing Arts for, for this sort of uh, wonderful opportunity to work and, and, and do something new at home, as you said. Um, so Riaz Kavali is, is a, you know, uh, artist collective. We have several musicians from different backgrounds, ethnic and religious backgrounds. Uh, we come from a very, you know, different training as well. Many of us were trained in, uh, in Western music because we grew up here and we went to, you know, band or were in orchestra or were in choir. And then uh, we also got Eastern training. And uh, since 2006, we sort of found our way to each other and have been performing 
Qawwali music. And Qawwali music, you know, stems from um, a Sufi Islam and it looks at devotional uh, work and a devotional journey that a, a somebody who's spiritual and on quest is going through. And uh, this, this genre of music is just, you know, so gripping uh, for, for many reasons. Uh, interestingly enough, though, this was uh, a type of music that I heard when I was here, as in I was in yeah. Houston and, and experienced it for the first time, even though mm -hmm. this music is from South Asia. Um, I think I was on like a drive to Galveston with one of my, um, <laughs> one, one of my you know, family friends and it's changed my life. It's just uh, such wow. a, a expansive uh, uh, art that the more you deep, you know, dive deeper, uh, there are more and more things that you can explore it within. So we're excited to be able to share this for the last many years. Um, and so, you know, since 2006, we've definitely been uh, performing and, mm -hmm. and uh, to, to lovely audiences who uh, come and see us and we appreciate them so much. And um, in, it was in Houston that we, uh, released our first two albums, you know, at uh, wow. Asia Society, uh, and uh, we've we've been fortunate enough to, you know, really have a following from Houston, um, and you know that's been a blessing for us, and we're we're really excited now to be able to do something new uh, with you all, and then bring in our our Houston family fans uh, into this space to to hear Kabir. Yes. Yeah. We're so excited to have you all. And it is, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's really wonderful to, to, to sort of know that the, that, you know, you're kind of coming back to the origins, to the roots of, um, of, of your work, of, of the ensemble with this piece. Um, I just, you know, it's, I, it's so interesting to think about how um, there are so many different music genres throughout the world that really, um, you know, encourage this kind of introspection and dialogue through, through the, through the discipline. It's so powerful what the arts can achieve in terms of opening dialogue and um, encouraging sort of like changing your perspective on, yeah. on, on the, on your faith, on the world around you. Um, yeah, it's just really powerful to think about the the power that uh, that those moments have. Like you were saying, you can remember the exact moment that that this art form hit you. Yeah, and um, it changed me. Yeah, yeah. And, and I also think that uh, there are you know many different faith traditions that really take from this, right? So even within South Asia, you have the bhakti tradition, but bhajans that are within Hinduism um, that sort of use a similar aesthetic to Kavali. Mm. And Kavali is is sort of uh, using the same uh, rhythm and same mel melodic structures and same um, instruments melodically uh, to pro that are that are produced in Kavali, but the but the way that the voice sort of is used is a little bit different. And then last uh, to, to have come out is the Sikh Shabbat tradition. And uh, um, it's also using, you know, very similar instruments, both rhythmically and melodically, right. and the voice as primary. But it, I find it to be really unique that there are three distinct traditions within South Asia that are actually quite similar. And mm -hmm. it's the poetry and the specific subtle differences in, in a musical aesthetic that differentiate. Them. And, uh, okay. you know, a, a, a poet like Kabir really can, can be heard in all of these three now distinct traditions. And I think that's pretty phenomenal. Wow. Yeah. That's really fascinating to think about that. Like, and also how, um, Kabbali could be, can be like, you can see how it's an origin for these mm -hmm. other 
um, these other disciplines that uh, that have sort of adapted and developed their own structures and like you were saying um, sort of formats yeah but, I, I I may think I I think that probably Pudgeons uh, predate Cavalli okay uh, yeah. but but what I think is interesting is that today you you sort of have people being influenced from from each other right, right. so today you have Cavalli singers sort of taking uh, some way of directing emotion from bhajans or shabads. And I think there's there's a beautiful interplay of at least artists uh, borrowing and taking from one another. Right. Yeah. And that nuance is, uh, is so valuable because, you know, I think that we think about artists taking things from each other. I mean, we think about, uh, you know, in, in Western culture, uh, the history of jazz and right. you know how how uh you know like rap and hip hop have devo- developed in our in our country and there's so many nuances and and elements of the music that have carried through you know specific techniques and lines but uh and and that's happening everywhere that's happening yeah. in every discipline and we're all especially with globalization we're taking i'm sure there are elements um of of Kavali music and of these different uh, these different disciplines that are now probably being inspired by other ideas and other instruments and um, for sure yeah technology of course and, I mean we yeah. we ourselves are using Western sounds you know that right uh, that wouldn't be traditionally in the soundscape of Kavali or South Asia and, yeah. and so I completely agree yeah yeah yeah. Well, I'm really excited for our audiences to to experience to experience the music. I think it's going to be. It was, you know, when we first heard it, when when you all submitted, uh, it was really we were all just really struck and moved by by the the videos that we were able to watch. So, really excited for that. Oh, thank you, thank you. We're excited to to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think I think it was. Uh, I'm. After reading, you know, reading, sharing uh, the description with our audience just now, I think it, it's it would be great to talk a little bit more about Kabir as well. Sure. I think, um, you know, how did how were you inspired particularly to choose his work for this uh, commission piece, and yeah. and then and then of course the messaging within the work uh, really ties into. Our dialogue and and further so let's just start with Kabir. Kabir. And can... Yeah Kabir is uh, a very loved poet of South Asia you know uh, there are sects of, uh, of of Hindus that just listen to Kabir's work and and wow. they you know they do that sort of uh, religiously. Um, Kabir also has this wonderful ability to force you to look within and mm-hmm. move past rituals and i think that's a really important for a uh, really important thing for all of us to be doing and contemplating um but how we came to him is because i think the world today really needs it uh we unfortunately in in south asia have been trying to uh, divide, unfortunately, that has bled into immigrant communities here that were divided. And at Riaz Kavali, we feel the opposite, right? Because we have these different ethnicities and different religions, and we sit in the practice room together, and you know, we enjoy food together, and we enjoy right. song together. And, and so we feel that if more people you know, got together like we would, uh, maybe maybe we can learn from one another. And when you look at Kabir's poetry, he's doing that. He, uh, interestingly enough, when Kabir is, and this is what I find fascinating about him, when he's alive, he is sort of shunned by both communities, the Hindus and the yeah. Muslims. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, again, s- some of this is wrapped in, in, in myth, but uh, sure. when he dies, uh, both Hindus and Muslims want to bury him with the rite, with the you know rituals right. of their faith, and that hasn't stopped. I think today he's imbibed and, di- and digested by all faith communities. So 
in 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 Hindus, we've talked about Kabir bhajans and Kabir dohes, the couplets being there. We've heard them, you know, whether you're uh, South Asian from from one country or another, from north or or uh, the middle of India, sure. uh, from Pakistan, you've heard Kabir Dohes before. Um, interestingly, uh, on a recent conversation, uh, I also heard that he's been translated by Rabindranath Tagore into Bengali. And oh, so wow. we're talking about really major uh, poets being influenced enough by them to spend hours of their life to do this, you know, right. translations and stuff. So he's sort of everywhere in uh, in 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 language in in languages, um, and that's important, you know. If if we're talking about his thoughts penetrating into the people, yeah. so I feel that the divisiveness within this country, the divisiveness within the South Asian community. Um, sometimes words just get us further apart and it's art that can bring us together. Uh, sometimes it's poetry of people like Kabir that can really help us find our path to one another. And so we came at this organically and also as an intellectual exercise. You know, Kabir is just wonderful to read. And mm -hmm. so we've, uh, at Riyaz Kabali, been a fan of his his poetry, we use it within the traditional Kavali songs like Chop the Lux of Chini, Mosinana Milaike. But also, we've thought about and, and have composed other works of Kabir. So, uh, when this opportunity of a commissioning came up, we just thought it was so right and so organic to what Houston is experiencing. And to that effect, I, I also think that. What I proposed was let's use his work, let's use his poetry, but then also let's talk about it with community leaders and faith leaders uh, because it's these lived and shared perspectives. When we bring them to the same table, uh, we can have real dialogue and hopefully, like I said, uh, find a way to each other. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that that, that ties, like you said, sometimes words bring us further apart and it is the it is the arts that can really bring us together it's those powerful emotional experiences yeah. um you know deep human connection that can be pulled from the yeah. arts and that's such a wonderful starting point to then enter into dialogue because we have this beautiful shared experience that can be a starting point a launching point yeah um, just reflecting as well on on what you were saying about Kabir and how sort of ubiquitous the poetry is throughout South Asia. It's just, um, it's so fascinating that these messages of unity exist, but we're not necessarily internalizing them or really reflecting on them, even as we're hearing them, right? Like you said, there are people that are reading or listening to Kabir all the time yeah. and still these divisions persist and uh and it's you know it's and the way to I think you all are you know really thoughtfully trying to um engage with this work in a way that's not just like the message is great and the poetry is wonderful but how can we actually use this as a tool um yeah. you know and and uh and maybe continue the work of. Um, yeah, I think you know, conscious art. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, and sorry to cut you off. I think conscious art making is important as as a practice, right? Because yes. it is it is one thing to be creating new work, but also um, we at Riaz Kavali feel that some of that work needs to be very timely, very relevant to just right now, and you know, part and parcel. Of, of that ethos is what came to uh, fruition in 2020 when we started making Cavalli's for uh, getting out the vote and, and being yeah. part of the election uh, cycle in the sense of getting all South Asians to participate. And, and similarly here, you know, once we've done that work and, you know, the elections are over, it's not like we can stop and, and no longer do we need to 
have dialogue and, and build right. together. And so, you know, this commissioning is, is, is a continuation, in my opinion, of that work, which is we need to grow an understanding of each other. I do not believe that all of us are the same. Rather, I feel like it's the differences that are beautiful. I think it's the plurality that is phenomenal and should be celebrated. You know, the food that I cook at my house may be different than yours, then maybe different than Danish's or, um, uh, or Sid's in the, in the ensemble. And it's, it's, I want to, I want to taste, you know, the the food at at their people's homes. I want to listen to the languages that are spoken there, um, the art that they cherish. And in my opinion, it's, it's, the time that we spend getting to know each other that will then soon enlighten us to the fact that yes, we may have some differences, but overall we want, you know, similar things like love and we want to be heard and appreciated and we want security and, and, you know, the, you know, the basics of, of, of food, shelter and stuff like that. So I think Kabir pushes us to think about what are the rituals that bind us or Mm -hmm. that uh, force us to not concentrate on the bigger things. And is it in the label of the Hindu or the Muslim or the Sikh that will really make you a religious person? Or is it the feeding of the poor that makes you really religious or spiritual? Um, Mm -hmm. Uniquely, you know, one of the one of the uh, verses that we're using for this commissioning is something that uh, I've been thinking a lot about, which is Kabir talks about in, in one of the verses that in a man and a woman, the same person resides. And that's an important for important. Uh, so, so uh, sorry, in a man or a woman, the same divine light resides. And for wow. us, I, this is an important thing to think about, given that uh, the female perspective is not as often heard and celebrated right. in South Asia. Um, I'll specifically talk as a Kavali artist. Most of the Kavali songs that are written are by males, right? right. Um, and we need to think about uh, the other perspective that mm-hmm. is marginalized. You know, in, in this instance, it's 50% of the population. So it's not even right. a minority perspective. It's an important perspective. Uh, and the and the same thing goes for for artists. You know, Riaz Kavali is a group of guys. We need mm-hmm. to think about how we can collaborate with female artists, musicians. Um, right. And Kabir does that in one sentence. You know, he says, you know, <laughs> within a man and a woman, divine light resides there are not two separate things right and uh you know the next piece is you know when you're a child and you're crying it's that same light and the person Mm. who takes care of it is also the same light light. and i I just find that his poetry is so phenomenally deep and even as woke as i may think i am i still have to be reminded of uh, you know, equity, equity and inclusion, even in, in my own practice. Yeah. Well, and I think also um, the reminder, the reminder of equity and inclusion, absolutely, but also the reminder of the humanity of every single person around you. You know, mm. the we think we often get caught up in dialogue and in debate. And it's really easy to uh, dehumanize or demonize people oh. on the other side or, you know, people who aren't sort of in your orbit. Um, and, uh, and I think that reminder of, of how we are all, we all have that divine light. We all have the, that inner humanity is really important. And like, like you said, a great starting point for a dialogue, for a deeper, like you said, intentional art making conversation. Um, So I want to pivot to talk a little bit about the panel discussion that we're going to host. This is going to be on um, Saturday, November 13th. Um, 
we are partnering with the uh, Bonnie Institute at Rice University. We're really yeah, excited. We're... Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the panelists and sort of the the uh, format and, and yeah. content? Uh, well, I, first, I'm very excited about it as well. I think it'll be after people have heard the piece or we'll be hearing it that evening. And and uh, I think it'll set us up for a really lively conversation. I've purposely curated it so that we have perspectives from community leaders. Um, and these people are living that, uh, that experience, that living you know, Kabir's work uh, in their day to day. So we have uh, somebody from the Sikh community, from the Hindu community and uh, the Muslim community. Again, all of uh, these, these people have familiarity with Kabir's work, but also an understanding of how it gets digested within their community, right? And I, you know, we'll be talking about uh, pieces of poetry or poetry uh, uh, couplets that are really popular within uh, their faith traditions. And then, you know, because we're at Boniac, I'll be I'll be excited about uh, the perspective of Dr. Jamal, who's who's there, um, as to uh, you know, the academic understanding of Kabir and how he, um, you know, writes in Avadi poetry and, and uh, still, you know, communicates throughout South Asia. The other thing, uh, this, this dialogue, I think, will allow somebody who's, who's listening to feel is, is what I was talking about in the beginning, that he's this one person, but he's like loved by like three different communities. Yeah. To, to the extent that within the religious text of Sikhism, Kabir's poetry is there. So it's not like they reference it. It's it's within that community um, and it, within the Guru Granth Sahib that his poetry is actually part and parcel. And I think that's pretty phenomenal. Within yes. you know the Hindu community, like I said, bhajans are there. And more recently, we've seen uh, Kavali artists also take to... Uh, Kabir's poetry exclusively. Before it was used in sort of interjecting it in couplets, um, uh -huh. but but now over the last uh, decade or two, we're seeing it uh, being used exclusively. So talking about this, uh, especially with the context of uh, the commissioning, I think would be a, a really insightful, even for me. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to uh, each of their perspectives. Uh, all, all of them are a lot smarter than than I am, so it'll be a lot of a lot of uh, heady stuff. It'll be really fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be fascinating. I'm really excited for it as well, and I'm excited for our audience to have the opportunity, like you said, to see the performance on Friday and then come to this discussion and really delve in deeper um, and learn so much more about the work. Um, I think, especially for our Western audience, that um, you know is not going to understand necessarily uh, what they're hearing, is not going to know the meaning specifically of what they're hearing in the moment. Um, it will be really valuable to, to understand a little bit more about the context. And then for our uh, South Asian audience, um, I think it will be really uh, a really wonderful opportunity to dig deeper into this dialogue, to think more about the, the intentionality behind incorporating um, Kabir's work and, and work of other uh, similar artists and poets into our contemporary um, artistic practice. Yeah. I mean, and, and as you say that, I think the, the thing that comes to mind is I'm also conscious of the fact that everyone may not understand this language, right? So we'll be talking about sort of translations and the themes that we're, we're really artistically representing. Because uh, that's part of the, the the vision that I have, which is to uh, to demystify Kavali or demystify these these poets, and the linguistic hurdle that comes with not knowing the language is you know just needs to be overcome, whether it's through translation or or part and parcel of the performance itself. But I think that helps us uh, once that's done, it helps us understand how close we are to each other. Yes. Absolutely. I completely agree. And I think that's going to be really, it's a, it's an important consideration knowing that, uh, you know, we want to make sure that this work is accessible to all, but I think also 
Ex but like you said, celebrating the diversity and the difference that's there. So, you know, we're not looking to make things um, necessarily easy, but uh, <laughs> right. Like it's not about making things easy or obvious um, uh, when it comes to, you know, any, any average uh, community viewer, but, uh, or, or patron, but we want to make the, uh, the work accessible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I think the journey sometimes to something that's not as easy is very fun and very fulfilling. Yes. So, so I, you know, as we think about it, we'll think about the performance aspect of how we can sort of sow the seeds and, right. and allow you to water them. And then in the discussion, I think this will be certainly, uh, you know, I, I imagine the community leaders will, will, use the couplets and the poetry, but then also uh, pull up and, and make this accessible. And I right. think both of that will be fun. And I, you know, I'm very excited that uh, you guys are partnering with us to do this because I think this is, um, you know, showcasing community and showcasing diversity within Houston. So uh, it just gives me a lot of, uh, a lot of joy to be uh, partnered with you all in doing this. Yes, it brings it brings us a lot of joy too. I'm so excited for this uh, this program. I think that's a great place to to end yeah. our conversation. Thank you so much, Sunny, for for joining me today, for talking through this um, program and and allowing our audiences to get to know um, Rias Kavali better and and get excited about this piece. We're we're very excited, and we'll see you hopefully in mid November. Yes. Um, thank you to everyone for, for joining us virtually and a huge thank you to our sponsor, Westwood Trust. Um, make sure to check out the work that Rios Cavalli has going on um, beyond their, their work with SPA. We'll have their website and social media linked in, uh, in the video description. Society for the Performing Arts is a nonprofit organization. If you enjoyed this conversation, please consider learning more about what we do at SPA and supporting our work and the work of our amazing Houston Artist Commissioning Project artists. And make sure to save the date for Rios Cavalli's Houston Artist Commissioning Project premiere live at Jones Hall on November 12th and 13th at 7.30 p.m. both days. Put it up on the screen so folks can see it. Tickets at spahouston.org. Um, and we'll see you then. Bye. Okay.